Hello, my name is Xiaoshan Liu, CEO and founder of Perceptin. This paper is titled Building the Computing System for Autonomous Micromobility Vehicles, Design Constraints and Architectural Optimizations. This work captures Perceptin's past three years of efforts of building a suitable computing system for commercial autonomous vehicles. In this paper, we introduce real autonomous vehicle workloads and present unobscured, anomalous data measured from our deployed vehicles such that future research can build on. First is a very short introduction. This paper is a first full study of commercial computing systems for micromobility. It complements previous academic research work in this area. It summarizes our R&D efforts in the past few years. The objectives of this paper include to highlight the design constraints unique to autonomous machines, to identify new architecture and system problems for autonomous machines. The contributions are the following. We introduce real autonomous vehicle workloads and present unobscure anomalous data measured from our deployed vehicles that future research can build on. We present simple generic models of latency, energy, and cost constraints for designing autonomous vehicles computing systems. We then use concrete parameters from our vehicles to highlight the design decisions that we made. We present a detailed performance characterization of our vehicles. The latency of the on-vehicle computing system contributes to 88% of end-to-end -end latency. We highlight that the computing system shouldn't be optimized alone, and we present two case studies to show that co-optimization of sensory and computational components is more effective. Also, we demonstrate that hardware acceleration on FPGA actually improves perception latency, um, and with runtime partial reconfiguration, it provides a cost-effective solution to balance programmability and efficiency. Before we delve into the details of this paper, let's take a step back to understand why Perceptin chose micromobility as our main market. Micromobility is actually a rising transport mode wherein lightweight vehicles cover short trips that massive transits ignore. According to the United States Department of Transportation, 60% of the vehicle traffic is attributed to trips under 5 miles. Transportation needs in short trips are disproportionately underserved by current mass transit systems due to high cost, which affects the society profoundly. And based on a recent McKinsey study, the market size will reach $500 billion globally by 2030, and that's why Perceptin chose this market. To show you what I mean by micromobility, let's look at a very short video. This video demonstrates a Perceptin vehicle operating in Nara, Japan at a Hijiro Palace, which is a tourist site in Japan. There's huge demand for micromobility services at this low speed and constrained environment. And that's the target of our uh, paper and the computing system. And there is quite an interesting business story behind this paper. When we started Perceptin, when, or when Perceptin started building low speed autonomous vehicles, we faced with three options of building computing systems. Option one is the optimization of commercial mobile SOCs. Option two is the procurement of spe specialized autonomous driving computing systems. And option three is to develop our own proprietary autonomous driving computing systems. If we chose to optimize off the shelf, commercial off the shelf mobile SOC, there are several benefits. First, mobile SOCs have reached economies of scale. It would have been the most beneficial for Perceptin to build its technology stack on affordable, backward compatible computing systems. However, a st extensive study is needed to fully understand whether mobile SOC is suitable for this kind of workloads. Second approach is procurement of specialized autonomous driving computing system. There were some commercial computing platforms specialized for autonomous driving at the time, such as from those from NXP, Mobileye, and NVIDIA. They're mostly ASIC accelerators that deliver high performance at a much higher cost. For instance, the first generation of NVIDIA PX2 system would cost over 10,000 US dollars. Besides the cost issues, these computing systems are mostly accelerated only to the perception function in autonomous driving, whereas we needed a system that optimized end-to-end -end performance. The third approach, development of proprietary autonomous driving computing systems, would guarantee that we would have the most suitable system. But then we would have to invest a huge amount of financial and personnel resources on this project. In addition, the investment does not guarantee the success of this project, thus it's a huge and risky bet for startup by Perceptin. We ended up starting with option one to try the mobile SOC, but we concluded that uh, first, mobile SOC does not develop enough performance as demonstrated on the figure on the right. Second, mobile SOC does not guarantee or does not optimize data communication between different computing units. For example, if you want to transfer data from CPU to DSP, you should involve uh, ex excessive data copy, um, which leads to a uh, low performance and a uh, high energy overhead. Third, traditional mobile SOC design emphasizes on compute optimization. While we found that for autonomous vehicle or autonomous machine workloads, sensing proce sensor processing is extremely important. Um, if you are interested in the business story behind, you can check out the paper listed at the bottom of this slide. It's quite an interesting business story before uh, we go into the technical details of uh, developing a proprietary computing system. And then before we go into detail of the design, let's look at the autonomous driving infrastructure. It's divided into two parts. First is on-vehicle processing. The second part is cloud services. After all, 
autonomous vehicles are mobile systems that needed cloud support. So for on-vehicle processing, our vehicle relies on a wide variety of sensors, including stereo cameras, GPS, IMU, radars, and sonars. The sensing data fits into the perception module, which localizes the vehicle and understands the surroundings, such as object position. Then the perceptual understanding are used by the planning module, whose goal is to generate a safe and efficient action plan for the vehicle in real time. These workloads exhibit static data flow patterns. Also, each stage imposes additional constraints for the next stage. And the main challenge is how do you integrate all these components together into a smoothly working system, as any of these components can be the bottleneck of computation. For cloud services, while executed offline, are essential to support an autonomous vehicle. Our cloud workload includes map generation, simulation, machine learning, model training. Over time, the new machine learning models, algorithms, and maps are updated to the vehicles, which in turn continuously provide real-world observations and statistics to the cloud tasks. In this paper, we choose to focus on building the computers for on-vehicle processing. So first, let's start with design constraints. There are six design constraints, latency, throughput, energy, thermal, cost, and safety. Let's drop into latency and throughput. Late, the latency component consists of four major parts. The time for the computing system to generate control commands from the sensor input, the time to transmit the control command to vehicle's actuators through the CAN bus, the time it takes for the mechanical components on the vehicle to react, and the time for the vehicle to fully stop. And we have developed analy generic analytical models in this paper to capture these details, as you can see on the figure on the upper right. Um, the figure on the lower right shows the impact of um, energy on the vehicle operation time and the impact of latency on um, the vehicle reaction time. Uh, you're welcome to check out the details for these figures. The second uh, category of constraints are energy and thermal. Um, since these vehicles run on battery, computing and sensing would easily drop operation time per charge from 10 hours to 7.7 .7 hours, so energy efficiency is extremely important for us. Also, we deploy conventional cooling techniques for thermal. And then last components, cost and safety. Uh, we want to maintain low cost such that we can sustain $1 per chip for our customers. And then for safety, we develop proactive and reactive paths such that if the proactive detection fails, we still have the reactive path to guarantee the safety uh, of pedestrian and um, passengers. So we also conducted a detailed case study of uh, LiDAR versus camera using these constraints. For latency, LiDAR-based localization uh, takes much longer compared to vision-based localization. For power, LiDAR is one order of magnitude more power hungry than cameras. Cost, LiDAR is one order of magnitude more expensive, at least one order of magnitude more expensive than cameras. But for depth quality, LiDAR directly provides depth information at the precision of T2CM, which is uh, superior compared to cameras. So you are welcome to uh, check out details of LiDAR versus camera. And I think that's the choice between uh, Waymo and Tesla. Tesla de uh, deploys camera-based approach, whereas Waymo deploys um, uh, lighter based approach. We just introduced the design constraints for our system. Next, we're going to introduce the software pipeline, the system on vehicle design, algorithm, and hardware mapping, as well as performs characterization of our system. First is the software pipeline. Uh, here we show the block diagram of our on vehicle processing software system. Uh, there, uh, there are two paths the proactive path uh, and the reactive path. At the bottom of it, you see a red line which shows the reactive path. In this case, when sonar or radar pick up some obstacle in the near field, it does not go through the full computation. Instead, it just goes through the control to stop the vehicle directly. So here we call it the reactive pipeline. Next, uh, we show our system on vehicle hardware system. It consists of sensors, uh, a server plus FPGA heterogeneous computing platform, uh, the ECU, the CAN bus, which uh, connects all the uh, hardware components. First, uh, from the bottom, the ECU and CAN bus are standard components in non, even in non-autonomous vehicles. Uh, they have open programming interfaces we, we can uh, directly leverage. Uh, so we, in this paper, we focus on sensor and the computing system. In particular, our sy uh, system is equipped with two sets of stereo cameras, one forward-looking and one backward-facing uh, for depth estimation. Uh, and then one of the cameras in each stereo pair is used to uh, drive molecular vision tasks such as object detection. Uh, so by combining object detection and depth information, we can uh, extract a lot of uh, spatial semantic information. Also, the camera along with the IMU would drive the VIO-based localization algorithms. Um, considering cost, compute requirements, and power budget, our current computing platform consists of a silent sync FPGA board and a on-vehicle PC machine that's equipped with Intel CPU and NVIDIA GTX GPU. Um, no doubt the PC is the main computing platform, but FPGA plays a crucial role, which bridges the sensors and the uh, actual uh, main computation on the server. Now let's look at the algorithm hardware mapping. So we map sensing to the FPGA platform, which essentially acts as a sensor hub. It processes sensor data and transfers sensor data to the PC for subsequent processing. The reason that sensing is mapped to FPGA are threefold. First, embedded FPGA platform today provide very rich and mature sensor interfaces. Uh, and the sensing processing hardware that uh, server machines and high-end GPUs don't have. 
Second, by having the FPGA directly process sensor data in situ, we allow accelerators on FPGAs to directly manipulate sensor data without involving the power-hungry CPU or GPU for data movement. Finally, processing sensor data on FPGA naturally let us design a hardware-assisted sensor synchronization mechanism, which is crucial for perception. And then we assign the planning task to the CPU uh, of the on-vehicle self server. Um, and then also the perception tasks, such as scene understanding, uh, we assign that to the GPU. But for localization, we put it on the FPGA. Also, um, for the FPGA, there's one benefit, it's, which is runtime partial configuration. Uh, we can time share the resources on the FPGA to swap between different uh, feature extraction tasks. Next, we go into sensor synchronization. Uh, sensing has been overlooked by most research work, as most research work thus far focuses on perception and planning tasks in robotics. However, sensing is crucial to perception, especially sensing uh, sensor fusion techniques. Thus, sensor synchronization is quite a challenging problem in real world. As shown on the figure on the right, we show that if uh, synchronization is off by 20 milliseconds, uh, the whole localization trajectory is wrong. If it's off by 40 milliseconds, it's um, way off the actual path. So uh, sensor synchronization has huge impact on the performance of our system. Next, let's look at sensing computing co-design. Um, if we look at the figure on the right, VLO-based localization system, which requires synchronized sensor samples from both the camera and MU, the sensor processing pipeline itself may introduce variable latency that challenges the software-based synchronization at the application level. Also, camera and MU sensors processing pipelines uh, are quite different, as MU is triggered eight times more, fa uh, eight times faster. If they are synchronized in software, as illustrated in the picture, camera sample Z0 and MU sample M7 should be regarded as capturing the same event if everything happens in software because they are arrive at the same time. But whereas in fact, C0 and M0 captures the same event. Therefore, execution times um, also impact sensor processing as well. We need very accurate timestamp to make sure that uh, each sensor samples can correspond to the uh, uh, events that happen at the same time. So how do we achieve that? Uh, we propose a software-hardware collaborative sensor synchronization design to address the issue in software-only solutions. Uh, the figure shows a high-level diagram of our system, which is based on two design principles. First, we trigger sensors simultaneously using a single common timing source. Uh, second, we obtain each sensor sample's timestamp close to the sensor so that the timestamp accurately captures the sensor triggering time while, avoid, uh, while avoiding the variable sensor processing delay. And this is what we call the near sensor synchronization. Um, and guided by these two principles, we introduce a hardware synchronizer which triggers the camera signals, camera sensors, and the IMU using a common timer initialized by satellite atomic clock, which is provided by the GPS source. You can see on the figure, the GPS source goes into the hardware synchronizer, and the hardware synchronizer, which is implemented on FPGA, then distributed the um, triggering signal to IMU camera as well as other sensors. Equally important to triggering sensors simultaneously is to uh, pack a precise timestamp for which uh, for each sensor sample, and this must be done by the synchronizer. Uh, so a hardware-only solution uh, would be very suitable for this kind of uh, situations. So we have gone through the motivation for this paper. We have gone through how do we design the computing system. We have gone through how do we design the sensing uh, platform for our system. Uh, so here are some concluding remarks. Actually, in the past few years, about 50% of Perceptin's R&D budget has been spent on building and optimizing the computing system. And we are not alone, as Tesla also dedicated significant R&D resources towards developing a suitable computing system. Uh, we find that autonomous driving incorporates a myriad of different tasks across computing and sensor domains with new design constraints. While accelerating individual algorithms is extremely valuable, uh, what eventually matters is a system uh, level of optimization. So in this paper, we have presented a holistic um, we have uh, demonstrated that holistic SOV optimizations uh, is not enough. Uh, we need to move beyond optimizing only one part of the computer platform, and then we need to understand the constraints and the trade-off from an SOV perspective. And we have looked at horizontal cross accelerator opt optimization, and then most previous study focused on one accelerator. And we exploited the interaction across accelerators, and we present a data flow across different on-vehicle algorithms, and, their inher and we exploited their inherent task-level parallelism. For future research, there are two directions. First, we would love to uh, develop a prototype architecture for autonomous machines. Uh, there are two subtle implications from this paper. First, these workloads within autonomous machine actually exhibit static data flow patterns. Second, each stage actually imposes additional constraints for next stage. Um, our next step is to develop a prototype architecture to capture these two observations. 
Uh, second, we would love to uh, develop a TCO model, total cost ownership models for autonomous machines, uh, because we need a comprehensive cost model for autonomous machines, such that we can find a sweet spot between cloud processing, on-vehicle processing, or roadside processing. And thank you so much.